Today we're making a scrumptious carrot cake. Fit for a queen, it even comes with its own little crown of frosting. Uh, this is not a cake decorating tutorial, there are plenty of those. It's packed full of the fruit and nut, spices, and carrot of course. So without further ado, let's make this carrot cake. We're going to start by preheating the oven and lining our tins. To prepare this recipe, we have three options. We can either use two thinner layers of a 20 centimeter or eight inch tin, or we could do one of those and then cut it in half, or do one nine inch or 23 centimeter single layer cake. So to line this brief form, just undoing the lever, putting a piece of paper over the base, pushing it down and clamping it. Easy. And for this recipe, I will oil them just with some olive oil spray. I'll set those aside. I'm going to grate these carrots into a large bowl. So just using a box grater, And to this, we can add our chopped walnuts, raisins, the sugars. So we have brown sugar, caster sugar, We're adding our oil, so just olive oil, and the plant-based milk. Now we just want to give that a good mix. And then in another bowl, we're adding our flour, our cinnamon, nutmeg, pinch of salt, bicarbonate soda, and baking powder. We're just giving this a light whisk, and this is my kind of way of sifting the flour, making sure all those um, spices and baking powder, bicarbonate soda are combined and dispersed throughout the flour. Just give this a quick, quick mix, adding our dry mix there and then just mixing it with a spatula until we have a batter. I'm just gonna use a scale, because I use a scale for everything. 700 grams into a 20 centimeter tin, and the rest. It is a pretty liquid batter, so I'm just giving it a little spin, let that spread out. If you're baking both tins at the same time, just make sure there's enough space around and on top of the tin for the air to circulate. I often find that um, the one on top is prone to cracking a bit more, so I just loosely press a piece of foil on top and this just creates a more even uh, rise. The way to check the cakes are done is when you open the door, if you're feeling game, you can just gently press the top of the cake. When it springs back, you know it's ready. The other way is to insert a skewer into a crack in the direction of the middle of the cake and it should come out clean. To make our tangy citrusy frosting, we're gonna start by adding to a saucepan the milk. I like using soy milk, but you'll find that when you add the lemon juice, it may, it probably will, um, separate, but that's okay. As we cook it out, it'll come back together. We're adding the cornstarch, vanilla paste, and then two nice zests of an orange, an orange which is just over a teaspoon of zest. These are incredibly um, aromatic, but very potent oils in the skin, so you don't want to overdose it. There is such a thing as too much of a good thing. So we're just gonna whisk this together before heating it, and we want to dissolve everything. We just want to make sure there are no lumps of corn flour in the mix before we begin to cook it out. So then over medium heat, we're going to continue stirring this until it comes to a boil. After three to four minutes, this mixture will thicken up and we need to keep whisking it so that it doesn't catch on the bottom. I do recommend using a spatula and just kind of gently going around the pan so you can scrape the bottom of the pan. So you'll notice that we haven't added any sugar to this mixture that we're cooking out. We could add a little bit, but we're going to add it later on in the recipe. So when you taste this, it's just gonna taste citrusy and a bit plain, but um, when we beat it, it's gonna take on a whole another layer of flavor with, that with the sugar. So just over medium heat, it's been about three minutes, you can see it is thickening up. Um, you see, it might look a bit lumpy, but we're gonna keep whisking this until it's all cooked through and all that 
the starch from the, the cornstarch has fully gelatinized. So you'll see that it is getting quite thick and we just want to keep mixing it until it looks silky and then we take it off the heat. You see that is now smooth. Now, continue with the frosting. I'm adding the sugar to the shortening and then I will We want to just make that it make sure that it's fluffy and pale before we start beating in our cooled custard base. So here we have our orange scented custard. You can see it's become a bit thicker, so I'm just going to give it a quick mix to make it smooth again. Then I'll add kind of a spoon at a time and then continue beating. In about three additions, we'll add all of our custard base. You can see that it's really rich and fluffy. And now if you taste it, it is full of flavor. It's amazing what a little bit of sugar can do. Just going to continue beating. All of this can of course be done in a stand mixer with a whisk attachment. Finished carrot cakes, we've got the frosting prepared. Cakes are fully cooled, and I'm just gonna trim the edges out by pushing against the tin with a small paring knife. And there we go. Now look how nice and flat they are. Same thing here, just trim this out and then popping the ring off. If your cake is more domed, feel free to trim a tiny bit off, but I'm really happy with these being flat enough to sandwich. So I'm just going to lift them off that base piece and leave the paper on. Then I'm going to use that bottom of the tin. You don't have to if you have a board or, or a flat plate that uh, you can scrape against. So I'm just flipping one of my cakes onto this board. And underneath the cake, I'm going to place a damp piece of plate towel just to keep the, the uh, plate tray or cake board from flying around. I'm gonna show you one method for finishing this cake. You can mask or finish this cake however you like, but I'm gonna start with a nice layer of frosting in the middle. And I'm gonna give this cake a new finish. Flipping this second layer on top and I'm just gonna press it down slightly. Put a bit more frosting on top. I'm gonna finish it like a nude finish by spreading the mix over the top until it goes over the edge. And then pick up. And then bring those edges in. Clean the palette knife. There are plenty of tutorials about how to mask a cake, but I'm going to stop here. And I'm just going to pipe a little bit on top using my piping bag. I'm just going to put a nice little I'm going to finish with some lovely pieces of walnut, some strips of candied zest that I have just done very quickly, just with a one-to-one -one sugar syrup, and uh, I've used a peeler to peel the edge of an orange, and then slice them into thin strips. Just give it a nice little bit of thinness. Do the same thing with the carrot and candy the carrot and you can make some really lovely little just kind of rolling them up loosely. Finally, I'm just going to take some fresh orange segments and then using my small knife to 
cut out some beautiful segments. I'm just gonna lay these around the side as well for a fresh touch. And there we have our 100% naturally plant-based, beautiful carrot cake.